Hello and welcome back to the Quiet Part Podcast. My name is Chris. How's everybody doing? I've got a few different segments to go over, so let's get right into it. But before I do, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, even that notification bell. And if you still want to support me further, I do have a Patreon. You can find that at www.patreon.com slash the quiet part pod. And that link is in the description. Check it out. All right. What do we got here? We got from timcast.com. DeSantis tumbles to fifth place in the latest New Hampshire poll. DeSantis is now a point behind Ramaswamy. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' campaign is continuing its downward spiral, falling to fifth place in the latest New Hampshire poll. The Washington Post Monmouth University poll, published on Friday, found that former President Donald Trump remains in the lead with 46% support. Nikki Haley is now second with 18%. Chris Christie is in third with 11%, and Vivek Ramaswamy is in fourth with 8%. First off, that is absolutely crazy. Chris Christie has 11% of the support? That is not possible. But, you know, polls are polls, except I think they're lying most of the time. Um, But no surprise here. Most of the party actually still wants Donald Trump, rightly or wrongly. I don't know. I want the primary process to vet the appropriate candidate. I personally am in favor of Ramaswamy. Uh, He has been killing it on the debate stage. And in every interview I see, he's very articulated. He's got a plan for just about everything. And I think he's got the right campaign going, but let's keep going here. All right. This tweet from Interactive Polls, uh, 2024 New Hampshire GOP primary. Trump, as I said, is at 46% with a 28% point bump here, or lead, I guess. Um, 18% for Nikki Haley, 11% for Chris Christie, 8% for Ramaswamy, and there's a good old Ron DeSantis at 7%. You still have Scott, uh, Tim Scott in here, but I believe he suspended his campaign, so that that poll might not reflect that yet. Uh, Burgum and Hutchinson also there. Weird that Larry Elder isn't there. Hmm. Additionally, uh, first choice puts... That those numbers were the first choice picks, and you got second choice. Eight percent said they'd choose Donald Trump if necessary. Seventeen percent for Nikki Haley, nine for Chris Christie, eleven for Vivek, and twenty percent would still say as their second choice they would choose Ron DeSantis. So there's still a little bit of support for him, whether it's warranted or not. Uh, DeSantis tumbled to fifth place with just seven percent of likely Republican primary voters supporting him. Breitbart News notes. DeSantis and Haley have, in essence, traded places with this poll as compared to earlier surveys taken by other polling outfits in the summer and spring. For example, a University of New Hampshire poll conducted July 13th through 17th found DeSantis at 23% in New Hampshire and Haley at just 5%. Similarly, DeSantis held 19% of backing to Haley's 5% in a St. Anselm College poll conducted from June 21st to 23rd in March, St. Anselm had DeSantis at 29%, WMUR noted at the time. DeSantis was once considered to be the front runner to challenge Donald Trump, but support quickly fizzled after his campaign announcement. That's weird. I don't know what could have possibly happened after he announced his campaign. I, I got it. He announced the campaign. Uh, His support was great beforehand because everyone kept saying, well, who's going to be this mystery person to challenge Donald Trump? Who's that guy? And we're still riding off of the great things that Florida did, you know, as a state during the lockdowns and coming out of them. And DeSantis was a key factor in that. And everyone kept telling him he needed to run. I don't believe when he won his election for governor last year that he wanted to run for president starting now. I know he had aspirations of doing it but not at this time. And everyone kept forcing him into this theoretical match against Donald Trump as if that was the only choice we had to go against him. And he started believing it. I think that was the wrong move on his part. And he could have been a very, very strong contender in 2028. And we wouldn't be talking about this now. It is, however, unfortunate that this is what's happening. 
I think he could have done very well if he had waited. Uh, I liked his policies, and I thought he could have been a good choice at, at that point. Now, not so much. I'm actually more of a Ramaswamy guy myself. I like what he has to say. He's killing it on the debate stage, and no one else is coming close. Uh, what does that mean for him? I don't know. I think as the primaries move on, we might actually see that he has a lot more to offer. I like his policy points. I like the things he says. Uh, that does concern me, obviously. If you've lived through Barack Obama, one of the biggest criticisms is his answers are too perfect. It's like he's trying to court the audience before, you know, hand without actually having substance. Now, comparatively, when I heard Barack Obama speak in uh, 2006 to 2008, I didn't get the same feeling, as it were. Yeah, he said an awful lot of set things that sounded very reassuring, but there wasn't really any substance there that made me go, you know what? Th this is why I like him. It was because he made me feel good when he said the things that he said. That ultimately it was Bar Barack Obama in a nutshell, in my opinion. He had a lot of talk, but he didn't have the substance. I think in this case, Vivek has the substance, and he also has that nice, charming charisma that draws you in and that concerns people. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I will see you in the next segment. Hey, everyone. Before I get into my outro, do you still love the iconic sci-fi and space opera franchises but feel like they took a wrong turn along the way? Then the new journey of the Starscape Chronicles eagerly awaits you. Escape to the Starscape. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yes, today I am talking about a book series from a friend of mine, Jeremiah McRoberts. Uh, he's got seven books already written and more to come. Uh, for that, I just simply want you to visit www.starscapechronicles.com uh, to check out the books, ebooks, and links to free audiobooks. Currently, there are seven books built in the Starscape universe from different perspectives. Together, they establish a galaxy of ongoing adventures that will continue for decades to come. Seriously, everyone, I, I recommend everyone check this out. I personally will be doing the same thing. This is a veteran-owned small business. Uh, he, If you're listening to me, you know that I like Tim Pool. And one of the things Tim Pool says a lot is stop giving your money to people that hate you. Jeremiah here does not hate you. And he'd be happy to entertain you and keep you enthralled for hours to come in what is a great series. Uh, go ahead and check it out. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you like that content and want more of it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment. Uh, these are all things that tell me that you like what you see and you want more of it. Um, beyond that, you can find me at Real Chris Noski on Twitter. You can find me at Patreon.com, uh, The Quiet Part Pod. Uh, there I will be uploading additional content, stuff you will not find on YouTube. Uh, it should be a great time. Check it out. Thank you.